Christian Matthew to bring up fourth down. Hopkins three catches, 49 yards. Over the middle, here he is. Loses the ball, picked up by New England, and touchdown, Raquan McMillan. Ugly, ugly Monday night football game. This is interesting to see. Your daily sports podcast, news, narratives, takes, gambling. I'm Nick, and... um, you can watch the show on Spotify or YouTube. There is no need to make fun of my receding hairline. I know it's there. I'm losing the battle every day. And as per usual for a white man, um, it's truly the first time in my life I felt like a victim, which is both funny, sad, and reflective. Is that too complimentary for myself? Let's get into Monday Night Football. What a weird and shitty game is one of those games. This is the first time all year that I really, really, really... Really had to force myself to watch and care about a football game. Um, Normally, one would bet on it to do that. I live in North Carolina where doing that is not legal except for a a Native American reservation. So I had to – it was work last night, and I ended up watching the whole game because it started to turn into a super-duper shit show, which kind of made it a little easier. Raekwon McMillan right there, scoop and score against DeAndre Hopkins. If you watch – Rewatch the play. I'll mute it so that I don't get a uh, copyright violation. Well, copyright claim. They use the copyright claim. I'm not violating anything. They're happy to make money off of my zero viewers. So if you watch Colt McCoy here, he drops back to pass. It's a screen or it's a it's an over route, kind of a drag. It's first and 10. Good way to gain some yards. Um, if Hopkins can make a man miss or break a tackle or two, maybe you can get, you know, eight to 15 yards. But it will for sure get four to seven. So here's Hopkins. He's got the ball. He's surrounded by Jelani Tavai, Raekwon McMillan. I think that's Raekwon McMillan, and I don't know who this is. I think that's Duggar, maybe their uh, second or third year player. So here's Hopkins. Look at look at him. Look at him just flail that ball around. He's just like flailing the ball. Like he just he just got it in his hand. He's just like the way I carry like a bath towel. Whoop! And then like he doesn't even doesn't no one touches it. He's got it so loosely with one hand that just tackling him jars it loose. That made the game 20 to 13. It was 13 all at that point, with five minutes left in the third quarter. And you're looking at Cliff Kingsbury, and everyone's like, this guy can't coach. And Troy Aikman and Joe Buck are shitting on him, of course. And you have to understand that the big story in this game happened the third play when Kyler Murray was scrambling. It looked like he planted on his leg, and his leg buckled. It looked very much like some sort of knee thing happened. I'm sure we'll find out today. Um, I'm sure they're going to wait for evaluation or whatever the coaches say, but it did not look good uh, for Kyler. So that was the story. Then everyone's shitting on Cliff Kingsbury and DeAndre Hopkins, the best player on the team, probably the best player on the team, pound for pound. If not, Kyler Murray does that. So the Cardinals are a mess. They need a high draft pick. They need something. They need an offensive lineman. They need they, they need some help. Um, and look, people feel like Cliff Kingsbury is going to be fired at the end of this year. He just got extended for a bunch of money, which is – Hilarious. They extended the general manager and the head coach and the quarterback in the last two years. They're stuck with the quarterback because getting out of that contract is tough, and he's going to make significantly two or three times as much money as the GM and the coach. He probably makes significantly more money than the GM and coach combined. Ah, coffee is so good. Uh, and that that makes sense. Quarterback should. Franchise quarterback should. It was appropriate last night that... Um, Cliff Kingsbury is on the sideline because it draws attention to something that's a much larger issue in sports. Cliff Kingsbury was the quarterback for Mike Leach at uh, Texas Tech, and this is from Albert Breer. Kingsbury was Leach's first quarterback at Texas Tech. It was he was the first to break all the records and help Leach create an incredible. Well, Breer says indelible. I would say incredible. He really changed the game. Uh, in college football, now he's at Mississippi State where he has a defense, but the air raid doesn't work, you know. But it, he's really enjoyable. A lot of people last night on TikTok posting uh, clips of Leach from his infamous press conferences, rants on weddings, rants on student loans, his cameo in Friday Night Lights. you you got to find your inner pirate. You're swinging your sword like this. you got to swing your sword like this, okay? Um, so everybody uh, kind of thinking of Mike Leach in this moment. <sighs> Uh, including Mac Jones, who said this after the game. Mac was at Alabama when Leach was at Mississippi State. Opening statement, just want to send prayers to Coach Leach and his family. Um, you know, he offered me a scholarship at Washington State and um, didn't ever meet him personally. I mean, I did, but it was on the phone. So just prayers to his family with everything. Uh, college football matters a lot in the state of Alabama, where Mac is from, and, and um, the SEC really, really doing their best to not 
try to dwell and think on the situation. The update yesterday came at around 11 a.m. after the show came out, which was that he was a heart attack. He may have been waiting for transportation for less than 20 minutes, but more than 10 minutes. I think I saw very like 17 minutes or 12 minutes, I think was the reports. But um, if he was not receiving CPR at that time, um, very bad situation for his brain. Uh, yeah, so you hope he was receiving CPR. You hope the uh, doctors at the University of Mississippi Medical Center are in surgery and helping him out. The fact that there's been no update, um, I can just tell you, working in media and working in medical media specifically, not good. Um, normally at this point in time, there would have been an update like he's in good spirits or something or, or whatever, but it, it, the updates make me think that he's not really conscious or he's not um, sound mind or body, which could be, he could be in surgery and they could be working on him and they could be making things happen, but the fact that there's been nothing like that and that they're keeping it super quiet is usually what they do when the family has to come in to kind of have difficult conversations. So that's, if you're going to assume the worst, that's the worst of how this is being handled. Um, anytime something is this quiet, it's usually not a good thing, uh, to be frank with you. They would, they would use things like um, scare. Like they would use the thing, like Mike Leach had a scare or something. So, uh, yeah, we'll be thinking about that, you know, essentially all day. So keep you updated or whatever. Controversial Wednesday is tomorrow. As you know, that's not going to be part of Controversial Wednesday. That's just sad. So. Moving along, Sports Business Journal reported that the preposterously huge ratings that the NFL enjoyed on Thanksgiving may have actually been bigger than they were reported. According to a study, um, the triple header may have actually been bigger than we thought it was. So the survey found that three, the three, that the three games should have averaged 44 million viewers which would be well above the TV streaming numbers reported by the two parties last month, which was 33.6 million. 44 million is pretty big. 10% of the country doing anything at the same time is pretty big. Um, and that's estimates on family. Jesus Christ, is that how fat my cheeks are right now? I'm so pissed. I can't. I hate the holidays, man. Well, anyway, that's a lot of viewers. <laughs> that's a lot of viewers. There's nothing like doing this and then like looking up to the production screen I have and seeing like, wow. So in total, that's the average for the different games. The NFL and Nielsen conducted a minor study around the Rams-Bengals matchup that put the audience at more than 208 million viewers. That was for the Super Super Bowl. Um, but Nielsen reported 110 million viewers for the game. So these are just disparities for how ratings are reported. But it looks like it's, it's possible that the NFL may have... It, it's essentially never been more popular than it is right now. Other big news in sports yesterday. Skip Bayless made a uh, debate with Shannon Sharp personal, and Shannon Sharp yelled at him and took his glasses off, uh, and then Skip kind of dummied him, and Skip looks real bad. Um, this is what they want us to do is view this. So, like, let's listen to Shannon Sharp scream at Skip Bayless, because Skip Bayless is like, you're jealous. You've never had a career like Tom Brady. And Shannon Sharp was like, what do you want me to say? He's better than me. Well, this is a tough, tough look for Skip. Shannon handled it. A lot of people on the internet were like, I'd have punched him in the face. <laughs> See what you do? You take personal shots. No, when you for I, don't, I don't take personal yeah. shots. On, you time started time it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I so didn't take a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses off. You see the glasses off? This is back on. Can I? Skip, Skip knows what he's doing. This is how he makes his money. Finish. You're willing to take a personal shot at me. This All he has to do to get him back was like, you don't sleep in the same bed as your wife so you can watch sports. And you take it that seriously like you're a professional athlete, but you're not. <sighs> Skip's biography came out and um, a couple years ago. Man, that's quite the read. <laughs> I don't know. I only listen to people talk about it because I would never do that. T.Y. Hilton, the uh, he kind of used to be a star, nah, best superstar-ish wide receiver. He would have been a superstar if he had played in a market outside of Indianapolis. Latter, 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 latter parts of Peyton Manning's career. I think that he might have been a rookie or second-year player with Peyton Manning, but he was really good in the Andrew Luck years. Uh, T.Y. Hilton and Andrew Luck was a great connection. Hilton's been a free agent this whole time. I think he had some injuries. He also didn't just like want to go through training camp or whatever. He is who the Cowboys are going to sign to shore up their receiving core instead of OBJ. It's becoming increasingly clear that OBJ is not in a position is not in a position to play football anytime soon. Which I think is Something we all suspected. He got hurt in the literal in the literal Super Bowl. So it makes total sense that he wouldn't be ready to play. No one could reasonably expect him to be ready to play. Andrew Benintendi, I believe, 
an outfielder. Uh, we've got baseball free agency going on right now. Justin Verler, Verlander signs with the Mets. Trey Turner signs with the Phillies. And it looks as if Andrew Benintendi, the outfielder, is going to sign with the Yankees. But we shall see. We're going to keep baseball on the back burner for now for a little while until all the dust settles. Remember, years ago, Bryce Harper didn't sign until like a day before camp started. So we're going to let all this happen. Uh, A lot of moving parts to baseball free agency and baseball signing. So we're just going to keep that on the back burner until facts are facts. Um, Like Trey Turner, that's a fact. Justin Verlander, that's a fact. Those are essentially done deals. So we'll we'll report that. I wanted to uh, get out of here with a murder. Not a real murder. An internet murder. So uh, this is Twitter after the game. Reporters asking Miles Sanders, what means more to you? Yards or touchdowns? Miles Sanders, Super Bowl. Then Trayvon Diggs after the game, who kind of shared an interception, said, credit me with the INT, please. I had it first, LOL, or we can split it 50-50. Cowboys and Eagles heating up. Trayvon Diggs wants credit for the interception. Miles Sanders wants a ring. They play on Christmas Day, if you care. We all do. Back and better than ever for Controversial Wednesday tomorrow. See you then.